Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Uh, please subscribe and hit the like button and I appreciate it very, very much. We're going to start out today with Biden. As he continues to drain the United States Strategic Petroleum Reserve Strategic <laughs> I'll pronounce it correctly one of these days uh, SPR, President Joe Biden is now trying to defend his actions, claiming that they are not politically motivated at all. While skyrocketing gas prices being a major concern for Americans, leading to low approval numbers for the president and his party, Biden has released oil from the SPR on several occasions since taking office, while he claims that the draining of the SPR is being done simply to help Americans pay less at the pump. Has the price has gone down? Let me know. Critics have argued that Biden's actually just trying to boost Democrats' approval going into the November midterm elections. Sounds like it to me. On Wednesday, reporters at the White House questioned the president about his decision to release an additional $15 million from the reserves to keep prices low just weeks before the elections, asking him if his decision was political. Biden denies the assertions, the assertions stating not, it's not, look, it makes sense. I've been doing this for how long now? It's not politically motivated at all. The president went on to scoff at Republicans for calling him out over releasing more oil as he has authorized the release of over 200 million barrels from the SPR since taking office. Republicans have also demanded that the president take more action to open up an initiative size initiatives to domestic oil production. Okay. Where have they been the last four months? Biden said when asked to respond to Republicans. That's my response. The problem is these guys are asleep, he added. I don't know where they've been. Really? Biden then falsely claimed that he has done nothing to slow or stop U.S. oil production. Well, who stopped the pipeline? The pipelines? Who closed them down? Let's debunk some myths. My administration has not stopped or slowed U.S. oil production, he argued. The president's claim is blatantly false. In his first two years, Biden leased fewer acres for oil and gas than any other administration at the same point since the end of World War II, according to reporting from the Wall Street Journal. The president also issued an executive order halting oil and gas leases and suspended oil production leases in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, reversing actions taken by his prede predecessor, former President Donald Trump. Biden also famously canceled the Keystone XL oil pipeline, which would have been responsible for transporting 830,000 barrels of crude oil to the U.S. from Canada. Sometimes I just got to shake my head at his comments, at his statements. I don't know. He's always trying to cover his rear end for the decisions that he's been pushed to make or he did make on his own hmm I don't know well let's go talk to Nancy Pelosi for a while <laughs> Speaker Pelosi said she doesn't think Donald Trump is man enough to testify before the General Sixth panel the panel subpoenaed Trump calling for him to submit documents and testify by mid-November. Trump could be held in contempt of Congress if he doesn't comply, or he may drag out the process. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she doesn't think former President Donald Trump is man enough to be disposed before the January 6th committee. The committee officially subpoenaed Trump on Friday, demanding he turn over critical documents by November 4th I thought they had them all. Well, I guess not. That uh, 
in-house informant of his, whoever that is, and I still don't have no inkling who that is. I'm anxious to find out who, who done that and appeared before the committee by November 14th, just about a week after the midterm elections. I don't think he's man enough to show up, Pelosi told Jonathan Capehart on the Sunday show on MSNBC. I don't think his lawyers will want him to show up because he has to testify under oath. But I don't think he'll show up. I don't think he's man enough. We'll see. When the committee voted unanimously, unanimously earlier this month to subpoena Trump, he sent a letter repeating his false claims about the 2020 election. He's got to give up worrying about that. He needs to tend to this right now. I said that in another video I made yesterday, I think it was, or day before. We'll see if he's man enough to show up and if the public should make a judgment. No one is above the law. And if we believe that, then they should make a judgment about how he responds to that request, Pelosi said Sunday. The speaker added that if Trump doesn't comply with the subpoena, then citizens can conclude that he thinks he is above the law. What about her and whoever was working with her that day when he told them to please call in the National Guard? And that was three days before the riot. Ain't nobody going to speak up about that? Whatever actions the committee may take up is up to them. I kept my distance from their decision making, but whatever they decide will also send a message about his respect. Pelosi said of Trump, He isn't honoring the oath we take to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. That's a serious oath that we all take, and clearly most of us had more respect for the office he held than he had. Somebody better speak up. Members of the January 6th panel have maintained Trump is required by law to comply with the subpoena. I hope he does. I hope he does, and I hope he brings forth that he had warned them and asked them to please call in the National Guard because he had a gut feeling. And this was three days before it ever happened. And they didn't do it. They didn't do nothing about it. Representative Adam Kinzinger previously said that the DOJ holding Trump in criminal contempt is a bridge we cross when we have to, while Representative Liv Cheney warned that Trump would not be permitted to turn this into a circus. Who's turning it into a circus? Mm, Trump has not said whether he will comply with the subpoena. He better. Though he has privately mused that he might comply if his testimony is broadcast live, according to the New York Times. Trump could try to delay the proceedings, waiting them out until Republicans likely retake the House in November. The committee is set to dissolve along with the 117th Congress on January 3rd of 2023. See, they always leave out what they've done wrong and pin that on Trump. That's what it seems like to me. I just don't know. Well, there's no more I got to say about that. So, I just don't know. On September 13th, this Mary Petola made history at the first Alaska native sworn into Congress. Petola told insiders she was on the fence about running until an encouraging call from her father. The congresswoman described herself as pro-jobs, pro-fish, pro-family, and pro-choice. Democrat Representative Mary Petola also almost missed her opportunity to represent Alaska. A few days before the deadline to declare her candidacy in the special election to fill the late Representative Don Young's seat, she was undecided whether she'd run. The night before making her decision, her father called. He said, I know that this is your decision. I just want to say one thing. You are as well positioned 
as anyone in Alaska to run for this and win this seat, she told the insider. Her dad's word were imperative, and she said, because there were people who didn't take her candidacy seriously. There are so many reasons not to do something, and oftentimes there's more reason not to do something than to do something. So to have the kind of encouragement that really was really critical for me, she said. So Todd, Todd Palane, Todd Palin, Alaska's uh, ex-husband of Alaska's Governor Sarah Palin, and Todd Palin, the ex-husband of former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin, filed for divorce in twenty uh, divorce in twenty nineteen. I don't know what that's got to do with anything, but it was here, so I just <laughs> I just read it. Alright, now it said continue reading. So where is it? Well, I guess there's no more there to be said. Alright, well I don't care about divorces and stuff like that. So I'm going to go and um, do some research and I will see you all later. God bless, be good, and you are a blessing.